we're talking about 3D printed guns. Because if there's anyone who I don't want to be armed, it's a guy who just messed around with a printer for presumably a few hours on end. I mean, I'd lose my mind trying to 2D print a gun. It's not connected, refill my ink, but I just did that. Alas, this is a huge debate going on, not just in America, but across the world. Can you publish schematics for printing guns online? Everybody is saying print is dying. Man, in America, it's just so much easier to get a gun than a 3D printer though. So first, let's do a quick background check on this issue. There are a few legal hurdles that this weaponry has to get through. First, this gun becomes invisible, undetectable, an assassin's dream. And an even bigger problem, current federal law regulating undetectable guns is set to expire December 9th. Then such a gun can be manufactured with no meaningful requirement for metal. Well, of course we wouldn't want to make the federal law protecting us from undetectable guns permanent. Now, I hear some of you rolling your eyes, but recently this happened in Israel. An Israeli TV station made a plastic gun and was able to smuggle it right past security into a room with Prime Minister Netanyahu. Look at that, gun and Prime Minister only feet away. All right, first, I see your point, but only a few feet away? Yeah, get a new ruler on that one, buddy. Overall though, yeah, Israelis aren't exactly known for being chill with security. So if they didn't catch that, I'm sure the dropout at your music festival who pokes you with that metal detector while checking out the hot girls ain't finding anything. That report was released just before the controversy started. Then it hit the fan. In May 2013, the federal government demanded that Wilson take down the instructions. They claimed that Wilson and his company Defense Distributed were exporting secret military hardware for anyone to take, which violates the international traffic and arms regulations. All right, before we go any further, let's tap on the brakes for a second. I'm used to seeing this 3D printed piece of crap that combines the fire rate and accuracy of a musket with the reliability of a deadbeat dad. I think even an open carry activist might ask you to put that ugly piece of junk away. That's the Liberator, the main gun whose schematics are in legal jeopardy. But what the hell is this gun though? That looks like a gun gun. Can you print that? Short answer, no. Long answer, no. Yeah, the news is using B-roll of people shooting machine guns when that's not a thing. You can 3D print a magazine in a very specific part of the gun, but that would not help you alone in a gunfight, unless you're really good at throwing pieces of plastic. Back to the issue though, this one-shot handgun that is the Liberator. So the Obama administration in 2013 took these schematics off the internet asserting that these blueprints were breaking international arms dealing laws. This case simmered in the lower court for five years, but in mid-June the Trump administration settled the case, allowing the release of these gun schematics, as well as paying for the legal fees of the man behind the original schematics. And that's where this story ends. A federal judge in Washington state has issued a temporary restraining order stopping the release of blueprints to make untraceable 3D printed guns. Of course there's more. That's the most recent report from three days ago. Apparently those Washingtonians don't think it's a good idea to allow individuals to produce their own untraceable, undetectable guns. Pfft, wimps. Alright, so now that we have the background, let's pop some drama me in and enter the spin zone by listening to what MSNBC and Fox News have to say. Even though the, the right to keep and bear arms is protected by the Second Amendment, this is a First Amendment case. This is a case about the freedom of speech because you have a document which is truthful and accurate and scientific, which the State Department, inexplicably, it's a head scratcher, told the young man that created it that he could start posting on the, on the Internet. So it's, it's an expression of an idea and the court uh, is stopping him from doing so. Now that's a very important distinction, because the argument this falls under international arms dealing laws and therefore falls under the regulation of the federal government hinges on, well, the idea that the arms are being dealt. This guy from Texas just posts free schematics on his websites, giving people internationally the opportunity to download these plans. I mean, some would say that if this is arms dealing, we should burn JK Rowling at the stake for being a witch. He went on. But I mean, think about it. You can go into a public library, a library owned by the government, and find a book telling you how to make a bomb. 
You can find a book telling you how to make a plastic gun. Why can't you find this on the internet? Who could have guessed that the least militant part of your public library was the free internet? First, all of that is surprisingly enough true. While researching this issue, I looked into the similar issue of whether you can post bomb schematics on the internet, which should double the amount of views I get on my videos because honestly if the NSA and FBI aren't subscribers to my channel after I googled homemade bomb schematics legal, well then frankly they might not be doing their jobs. Anyways, yeah. During the push to make posting bomb schematics on the internet, which was made into law in 1997, two years after Dianne Feinstein presented it as a bill, it's now punishable by 20 years in prison and $250,000 fines. But if you publish it in print, well, that's totally fine. I went on Amazon and I found books on sale like Homemade C4, A Recipe for Survival. And let me tell you, nobody's spending $84 on that book because, hmm, it sounds interesting. It's a book club book and it's been on my summer reading list for years now. So you can't make a bomb unless you get off that computer and read a book. Well, not quite. To put all this in perspective, at the same time as all of this, I am really chagrined and concerned. If anybody cares, vote at least to prospectively ban the manufacture, the sale, the importation of military-style assault weapons. Yeah, that failed about as badly as anyone who's ever read the news would have suspected. But this bomb schematic banning bill passed with all of the votes. There wasn't even one amateur bomb-making senator from the Deep South who said, you won't pry my homemade C4 from my cold, dead, and probably fingerless hands. So it seems pretty clear that this would all get scraped off the internet then, right? Well, in a paper called Bomb Making Manuals on the Internet, Maneuvering a Solution Through First Amendment Jurisprudence, which, wow, we have papers on literally everything. If there's a way to make bomb making manuals on the internet boring, leave it to the constitutional lawyers. According to them, it was not that easy. The DOJ report suggested alterations to the proposed Feinstein Amendment in 1997. Well, of course they did. I mean, God forbid we make anything simple. When making these suggestions, the DOJ relied heavily on the district court's decision in Rice v. Paladin Enters, Inc. The Rice decision held that the First Amendment preclude a finding that the publisher of a how-to manual for assassinations was civilly liable for a death in which the victim's killer allegedly relied on the manual. Now, this is all great news for all you murder consultants out there. Just being the murder equivalent to a dad calling out orders from the sidelines of a little league game will leave you protected by the First Amendment. Unfortunately for everyone, in this roller coaster we call lawmaking, soon after all of this was discussed, the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals reversed the district court's decision on Rice. Do we have a clip? Nobody cares! Nobody cares! Yup, that checks out. This is very important to the niche industry of spreading questionable schematics on the internet though, because their decision recognized that long established case law provides that speech, even speech by the press, that constitutes criminal aiding and abetting does not enjoy protection of the first amendment. Alright, so what the heck does that mean? Well, basically it factors intent into the equation, which makes this whole thing a lot more muddled. Basically, you have to prove intent to remove this stuff, which generally actually isn't too hard, because a Hamas published guide to making suicide vests, well, nobody's making a suicide vest because they think it's going to be part of the spring fashion lineup. Oh, this season is all about jean shorts and a suicide vest. The wires wrapping around the dynamite have a slimming effect. Contrast that with the homemade C4 survival guide. And, well, the word survival has a whole lot of importance in making that thing legally viable. So let's pivot back to guns. What is this guy saying? He explained the reason behind his decision to post the instructions online. Here's what he says. I believe that I am championing the Second Amendment in the 21st century. I think access to the firearm is a fundamental human dignity. It's a fundamental human right. Unfortunately for liberals, this guy isn't looking to help criminals. So with all that bouncing around in my head, well, Washington State, 
you have quite the uphill battle. Let's hear what you have to say. Well, Democrats are arguing one very specific argument. Ronald Reagan, in 1988, Ronald Reagan recognized that we shouldn't make it easy for people to manufacture guns that could go through metal detectors or not be traceable. And that policy was continued by George Bush, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama. Now we have the Trump administration, which settled a lawsuit and decided we should actually make it easier for a child a criminal or a terrorist to make these guns, get it right through a metal detector, cause harm, and the gun's not even traceable. It's not providing 3D printing gun schematics that's the problem. It's that those schematics are for guns that are undetectable and therefore illegal. What does that mean? Well, to go back to what we were talking about earlier, you're helping someone commit a crime because... The Undetectable Firearms Act, originally signed by Ronald Reagan, makes the manufacture, distribution, production of these weapons illegal. Man, that guy just loves to mention how Ronald Reagan did this. If you listen to what the lawyers are saying, it's a lot more reasonable to NRA stances than what most people would probably think. Regarding the Undetectable Firearms Act, this legal consultant on MSNBC said, uh, It needs to be modernized, and the way you modernize it is you simply require that various components of the firearm must have some metal uh, permanently attached to them. I tried to get that passed uh, when I was in Congress. The NRA uh, adamantly opposed it. Wow, so we need to make those gun schematics more metal, and we're all good. Great. Remember though, when you're 3D printing your gun and you get a cartridge jam or toner low, maybe take a few deep breaths before you decide to finish printing. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. So everyone can learn. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan comedy news, remember to subscribe by clicking right here, or do it the old fashioned way by clicking the subscription button below. And remember to give me a thumbs up. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.